Aerobic respiration is how cells convert food like glucose into energy, ATP, using oxygen. And I wanted to break down the details of this, all the steps of aerobic respiration. But I want to start off by saying that we say aerobic respiration is the most efficient because it produces the most ATP, around 36 to 38 ATP. But before we get into the steps, remember that the entire point of aerobic respiration, even the other forms of respiration, is to produce ATP, which is what powers cells. Without ATP, you wouldn't be alive. So both prokaryotes like bacterial cells and eukaryotes like human cells do aerobic respiration, and it's split into three main steps. their glycolysis, Krebs cycle, and the electron transport chain. Okay, starting with step one, which is glycolysis. So glucose, which comes from the sugar you eat, the food you eat, um, enters your cell, and this happens in the cytoplasm of cells inside the cell. So in glycolysis, a glucose molecule, sugar, is broken down in half into two pyruvate molecules, and along this glycolysis, you also produce two net ATP, which is a little bit of ATP, and you also produce some NADH, which we call a high energy electron carrier. That will be used later. So. A glycolysis doesn't require any oxygen yet and it happens in the cytoplasm and it's how glucose gets split into two pyruvate molecules and we end up with two net ATP and something called NADH. Okay, step two, Krebs cycle. So in Krebs cycle, I'm going to talk about Krebs cycle, but before Krebs cycle can happen, the pyruvate needs to get converted to acetyl-CoA. Krebs cycle happens in the... Um, mitochondria of eukaryotic cells and in the cytoplasm of prokaryotic cells. So pyruvate gets converted into acetyl-CoA in the mitochondria of human cells of eukaryotes. The acetyl-CoA then enters the Krebs cycle, which is also called citric acid cycle, which is also called tricarboxylic acid cycle. And during the Krebs cycle, which involves a million enzymes, acetyl-CoA gets broken down further and you produce carbon dioxide as a waste product, which is why we breathe it out. And you also produce NAD and FADH2, which are high energy electron carriers that are used later. And also the Krebs cycle also makes two more ATP molecules. So at this point, we have four ATP, two from glycolysis, two not from glycolysis, and two, two ATP from the Krebs cycle. Now the final step is the electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain is where the majority of ATP is made. It happens in the mitochondrial membrane of eukaryotes of humans and it happens in the cell membrane of prokaryotes of bacteria. So the high energy electron carriers, NADH and FADH2, that were made in glycolysis and Krebs cycle, now get passed through a series of proteins in a membrane. And as these electrons move down the chain, they cause protons to be pumped across the membrane, and this creates a gradient. And this is so important to create energy. So at the end of this chain of this gradient, the electrons need to be cleaned up, and this is where oxygen comes into play. So oxygen is a final electron acceptor. It combines with the electrons and protons to form water as a byproduct. But the where the majority of ATP is made is because there's a gradient, protons flow back through the membrane through a protein called ATP synthase, and this generates a ton of ATP. So this is where the most ATP is made, like around 34 ATP. So in total, in eukaryotic cells, you end up with about 36 to 38 ATP. In prokaryotes, you end up with like a tiny bit more, 38 ATP. It's still 36 to 38. It's a similar process, different location. So in both eukaryotes and prokaryotes glycolysis happens first and it happens in the cytoplasm then we have converting pyruvate into acetyl-CoA and Krebs cycle that happens in the mitochondria of eukaryotes and it happens in the cytoplasm of prokaryotes of bacteria then we have the electron transport chain that happens in the mitochondria membrane of eukaryotes and in the cell membrane of prokaryotes. So that's aerobic respiration. Glycolysis produces two net ATP and some NADH. Krebs cycle produces two ATP, some NADH, some FADH2 and CO2. And then electron transport chain takes all those NADH and FADH2 
creates this gradient across membranes and then you end up with the most ATP. That's aerobic cell respiration. 